I've spent the best part of this year writing a book on positive communication and mindset. Now one of the things I've realised while I've been writing is that a lot of people are surrounded by so much negativity. It's actually hard for them to find some positive thoughts when the, everything they encounter is just so negative. And I think that the way we communicate is hugely impacted by our thoughts and our feelings. Yet around us we have media that's full of negativity. So you only have to open a newspaper, turn on the TV, the radio, watch a film most of the time. And there's lots of violence, there's lots of negativity, there's lots of crime. Even the primary school where I work, the children there, they talk about their favourite computer games. And a lot of them are very, very violent. And I'm sure that children of that, that age should not be playing them. Yet they are. So my big learning, really, as I've been writing, has been that there are two things that you have to do. The first is to block out all that negativity. Now, I, for a long time, have stopped watching TV. I stopped reading newspapers, watching TV, and any really actually blocking out all kind of negative forms of media about four years ago. And I have to say that my life is much more rich now than it was then. From time to time when I'm on the tube, I pick up a newspaper. And from time to time when I'm at someone's house, I watch a bit of news. I've uh, almost forgotten how negative it really is. Earlier this year, I was actually on the news a few times. And so, of course, I watched it. And I was really shocked by how I felt while I was watching it because a lot of it was about crime. A lot of the time, actually, it made me feel quite unsafe. So some people may say, well, you live in a bubble if you don't know what goes on around you. But what I would say in response to that is that I'm very happy in my bubble. And I wonder whether all those people around me watching the news could say the same. So that's one thing to block out as much negativity as is possible. I know for a lot of people they need to watch the news for work and things like that. What I would say is watch as little as possible, perhaps even using the internet as a better means to target the kind of things that you watch rather than watching everything. And alongside that, the other thing to do is to do more positive things. Now I've recently started a bit of a campaign on Twitter and my aim at the moment is to do something that I love every single day. So. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll see my tweets on uh, things that I'm doing that I love, like going swimming, going for nice long walks, cooking, all those kind of things. And there's lots of pictures and things of me, me doing these things I love. And for me, that's very important because by enjoying myself, by finding more passion in my life, I raise my energy levels. And when you interact with other people, I think your energy levels, your enthusiasm, has such a big impact on other people. You see, society is actually made up of interactions. So the more peace you can find within yourself, the happier you can feel, the more you'll be able to inspire other people. Because we're all teachers to someone, aren't we? Now I wonder whether, when you were a child, if you'd seen a projection of the future. I wonder how you'd feel and what you'd think. I wonder whether you would feel as if you were living your dream right now. If you were to watch a kind of fly on the wall documentary of your life, I wonder what your younger self would think. Now just push that idea to one side for a second. I wonder what your younger self would think if they were to see a day that panned out like this. Imagine you were to get up in the morning, open a nice crisp notebook, a 
just put any thoughts and feelings that are hindering your mind, that are stopping you from feeling positive. Just imagine putting all of those on the page, getting them all out. Because you see, if you don't get it out, it just keeps going round again and again and again like a stuck record. And it's really interesting because the human mind seems to work a lot better at finding solutions when we write about these things. Which is interesting, isn't it? Because I think a lot of the time when we speak about them, we're really stuck in problem. And it almost become, uh, begins to define us. We almost become quite self-indulgent, saying, poor me. But in a journal, this doesn't happen. So imagine your younger self seeing you journaling right now. After you finish that, imagine yourself travelling to work, perhaps listening to some nice music that makes you feel relaxed, or reading an inspirational book. And imagine getting to work. And try this one on for size. Imagine your whole office or your whole work environment taking a few moments of silence just to still your mind, to let go of all those thoughts, just to have a few moments of peace. Now, I wonder which one of those projections your younger self would find more crazy. The one with the TV and the media and all the, the crime going on around the world. The one with the violent computer games. The one with the arguments. The one with the distraught conversations when you arrive at work. Or the journaling, the reading, the listening to music and the meditation. It's an interesting question, isn't it? I'd just like to leave you with one thought. As I was saying earlier, society is made up of the interactions of individuals. So if you find enough peace within yourself, the interactions that you have will become more positive and more enriched with this peace. And these interactions, these one-to-one -one interactions, have an impact on everyone around you and their interactions have an impact on everyone around them and this is how we begin to find peace all over the world but it starts with you doesn't it thank you